Hey, kid! Pleasure to see you, Herr Liebermann. The pleasure is all mine, Herr Strasser, I assure you. I hate to bother such a famous Nazi hunter like yourself with such trifles as the rent. But it is the third of the month. Quite so. You will have a check in uh, several days. By all means, take your time, Herr Liebermann. Feel free to ignore your responsibilities while my property is being ruined. We have floods all over the building because of you. You overload the floor, putting a strain on the pipes upstairs. And then they break. The pipes upstairs break, and I'm to blame? Everything is connected. The whole building will soon collapse because of you. Hey, out. You have no you have right. war criminals. Well, from your books and articles. Forty years of heartbreak and sacrifice, and you call it junk? Yes, junk. Yes, junk. Yes, junk. We are wasting valuable time. I write at this very moment. Huge chunks of plaster are coming down from your ceiling. Look how I step on the ground. By soon, I will be thrown into your apartment. Right into the lap of your beloved wife, God forbid. Come. Don't push me. Leave Don't my push. brother and me alone. Get out! Come, Hester, sir. Hester, the man's an idiot. Hmm? I'm an idiot. For letting him make me angry. Go on, take your phone call. Oh. The young man who has just discovered there are Nazis in South America. Uh, so, uh, Mr. Kohler, 
Uh, forgive the interruption. Now, uh... I work alone, like you, Mr. Lieberman, which is why I'm calling you. You see, I'm on to something. Mr. Cola, it may be a blinding revelation to you that there are Nazis in Paraguay, but I assure you it is no news to me. And if you stay there much longer, there will still be Nazis in Paraguay, but there will be one less Jewish boy in the world. Something's going on. They seem to be gathered for some kind of operation. A bunch of them have been moving in and out of Ralph Gumpel's estate. I want to know what to do next. Get on the plane and go home, or better still, go to the American Embassy. Run to the American Embassy and tell them to put you on the plane. Thank you for your advice. What did he want? I don't know. Advice, instruction. A boy like that. Lucky to survive one day in Paraguay. He's been there some weeks. I told him to go home, and he hung on. What does he want? Applause? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, one, two! God damn! This is the moment. Gentlemen, gentlemen, be at your ease, I beg of you. Gunther, would you do the honors? Certainly, Dr. Mengele. 
Captain Gerhard Munt. Yes, yes, I have heard nothing but the highest praise for you, Captain Munt. Thank you, Herr Doctor. Major Ludwig Traufsteiner. Thank you for coming, Major. Uh, Captain... It's all right, Gunther. Captain Farnberg and I are old comrades, are we not, Captain? It's extremely flattering to be remembered after all those years, sir. Well, I am not so senile or so ungrateful that I cannot remember a loyal officer from the early days of the struggle. And now for the youth. This is Dietrich Hessen, son of Wilhelm Hessen. Welcome, young man. Wolfgang Kleist. I am pleased you are with us. Thank you, Herr Doctor. And Arno Schwimmer. Great pleasure, Herr Schwimmer. to business. Sit down, gentlemen, please. The task before you is the most important operation that the Comrades Organization has ever undertaken is the vital link in a program to which I and your leaders have devoted many years of enormous effort. Your success on this project carries with it the hope and destiny of the Aryan race. And that is not an exaggeration, but the literal truth. It is a holy mission, gentlemen. You should consider yourselves highly honored to have been chosen to perform it. Now, for the details. In the next two and a half years, 94 men must die on or near certain dates. 16 of these men are in West Germany, 14 in Sweden, 13 in England, 12 in the United States, 10 in Norway, 9 in Austria, 8 in Holland, and 6 each in Denmark and Canada. A total of 94 assassinations. All of these men will be 65 years old when their dates come out. Obviously, a few of them will already have died of natural causes. Yes, Von Back. Who are these men, sir? Jews? Not one. They are all family men, tax inspectors, civil servants, school principals, men of minor authority. Are we permitted to hire accomplices? Accomplices? I would not advise it. Bear in mind that these are 65-year-old men. Their eyesight is failing. They have slow reflexes, diminished strength. I've been through Sweden quite a bit, but I've never heard of this place. Rasbo? It is a village, about 15 kilometers from Uppsala. That is Bertil Hayden, the postmaster there, yeah? And by killing this old mailman, I will be fulfilling the destiny of the Aryan race. He was to be relieved of this assignment, Captain Munt. No, sir. <laughs> And do not question your orders. Simply obey them. Yes, sir, Doctor. I apologize. Further questions? Are not to be involved. 
Oh. He will travel and live in a manner befitting salesmen for large German firms. And you will have more than enough money for any equipment you might need. It is vital that you check in with headquarters on the first earth. Fine dead. Fine dead. Operator, any word on my call yet? I thought I told you to leave. Well, I didn't, Mr. Lieberman, but I think you're going to be glad I didn't. Dr. Joseph Mengele was here tonight. You mean to tell me you call me at 3 o'clock in the morning to tell me Dr. Joseph Mengele is in Paraguay? I know that, Mr. Kohler. So does my sister. So does my landlord and my tailor. And now you know it, too. My congratulations. He came to a meeting at Gunther's house tonight. And the others were there, too. Mengele sending them out to kill 94, 65-year-old men in the next two and a half years. What are you talking 
about ninety-four at sixty-five, two and a half years. I can hear you, Mr. Kohler. I just can't follow what you're saying. God damn it! You don't have to believe me. I've got it all on tape. All over Europe, Canada, the United States. Mostly civil servants. Okay, I'm running it down now. It'll only take a second. Take your time. Old men don't go back to sleep once they have been awake. Uh, the stuff on now is just a lot of introducing and glad handing around. Mengele's acting like chairman of the board. Will you stop asking questions and just listen, Mr. Lieberman? Okay, here it comes. The task before you is the most civilization has ever undertaken. Hola! Ah! Are you there? Call her! Call her! Oh! Your success on this project. Call Clean the room, dispose of the body. I do not want a trace of this vermin to remain. Everything is all right. You will take care of the police. Who was the boy calling? It does not matter. But perhaps we should wait. We wait. Nothing. The board rash is coming, Gunther. Our men will leave tomorrow as planned. Further? All right, thank you. The Vienna Telephone Exchange says there was a call from Paraguay. The Paraguayans say that no such call took place. I finally found a couple of things from that boy. Mund. Captain in a Death Head Regiment, Farnbacher Gestapo agent, Fausteiner, Assistant Commandant at Dachau, Chief Bureaucrats and Murderers, and these. Who knows? Ezra, now you know, you know you shouldn't. Esther, after all I've been through, one path won't help me. This. Oh. Uh, Colonel Edward Seibert, he's uh, adjutant Rausch, the head of the Kamarad's organization. He uh, was uh, in command of the extermination units on the Eastern Front. He's a real aristocrat. What's he doing in such undistinguished company? Well, then, it, it wasn't a hoax after all. No. Oh. Is there? On the telephone after that boy was cut off, I felt something. Something in the silence, something alive and hateful. Maybe I'm getting senile. <laughs> you haven't got the time.
94. Ordinary. So nice to see you again. How are you getting along? Can't complain, would listen. <laughs> May I take up a moment of your time? I'm so sorry, I'm late for lunch. <laughs> Always such a prodigious appetite. What? Eight times last week I called you, and each time you had lunch, maybe you have a tape on. Now, Sydney, please, just a few moments of your time. Oh, very well. Come on. Ezra, you carry this whole damn concentration camp scene pinned to your coattails. Why do you keep knocking yourself out? Nothing ever pays off. Rita Maloney is in jail? Rita Maloney. She was only a guard in a camp. Who strangled young girls with her own hair? Bayoneted infants? Well, maybe she was a despicable criminal, but she just disabused 30 years later. Sidney, there is a plot by the Comrades Organization, which is the illegal arm. Yes, I know what it is. A plot to kill 94 men in the next two and a half years. Jews, I suppose. I want your European, Canadian, and American bureaus to send you clippings of all 65-year-old civil servants who die accidentally. You pass them to me, and I'll do so. But whose plot is this? Josef Mengele. <laughs> He's the red herring in this little barrel. <laughs> what a title for the chief doctor of Auschwitz who killed two and a half million people, experimented on children, Jewish and non-Jewish, using twins mostly, injecting blue dice into their eyes to make them acceptable aliens. Ezra. Amputating limbs and organs from thousands, operating without anesthetics, but with the strains of Wagner providing an obligato to the screams of the mutants he was creating. Don't lecture me. You owe me something? Even if only to humor an old man who once bought you page one international store. You owe me this much, Sidney. Now I'm collecting. Have you any idea how many men in our mid-60s die every day? I try not to think about it. your wife, Herr Doring. <laughs> what I've got is too good for her. I can feel dead, Herr Doring. <laughs> go on, go on. <laughs> Take. <laughs>
Good boy. Good boy. Robert, news? Good news. Our salesmen have all checked in. The first quarters have been filled. Four and the exact dates. Two a day early and one a day late. Splendid, splendid. Come, we'll have a nice lunch. Already taken care of her. Four out of seven on the exact dates. They are good men. Well chosen. General Rouse called me yesterday from the Costa Brava. Why didn't you tell us about Lieberman? Did not think it was necessary. The general is concerned. But is Ron Lieberman? Oban takes him seriously. Even the rich Jews who used to send him money have found better ways to ease their consciences. The man's bank has failed. His followers have fallen away from him. He's entirely... Without credibility, I just decided it was not important. If you forgive me, Herr Doctor, it was not your decision to make. You could have compromised our agents all over the world. And if I had told you about Lieberman, you would have compromised my project. How bad would it be if we postponed for three or four months? That would reduce the outcome by... 20% there uh, 18 men in the first four months. It would change the results completely. Assuming that there is an outcome. There will be exactly the results I have promised. General Rausch wanted to recall these six men. Impossible. Until we find out how much Lieberman knows. Impossible. This project has a timetable that must be observed. It cannot be changed. Uh, doctor. Colonel, do you fully understand what it is that I have done? I, the outlaw, the so-called war criminal. Right here, this godforsaken place, I have created a scientific miracle. I have turned the whole world into a laboratory. Our laboratory. Talk to me about six men. I would send out six more if they were caught, and six more, and six more until the task was done. I agree, Herr Doctor. I agree. 
Let's hope that we can resolve this Lieberman business and that you get to put 94 check marks on that beautiful chart of yours. Come, walk me to the plane. You see how passionate I am on this subject. Uh -huh. To think that one day this place will be a shrine visited by millions of school children. Yes, that is a nice thought. Nice thought. Glad back 3.30, Ezra. We'll get there. We'll get there. When do I ever miss a train? Now you know what to do while I'm away. Go through all those clippings, separate them by countries and cities. Try to isolate all violent crime. Ezra, there are already more than a hundred clippings, and Ben on call to say there are more to come. Well, we have to start somewhere. Yes, but we can't afford to hunt for all those men. Well, that's why I'm going to these cities first, because they are the closest and the cheapest. It's the beginning. Yes, but you know that. Remember to separate the ones in New England from the rest. I can cover them while I'm on the lecture tour. Still without any help. Without help, without money, without time, what else is new? I like music. <laughs> well, he doesn't. <laughs> He's always prowling around the landing, listening at my door, just waiting to catch me. Catch you? Doing what? Just what we're doing now, love. Mr. Harrington doesn't like any mucking around in his house. He has a wife and kid, you know. <laughs> oh, coot. But he wouldn't say no if I invited him in here. Then maybe we'll invite him in. Later on. My name is Lieberman. Go. I think she's off the phone by now. You her grandson? Her son. Sit down. You are 
was the same man they had on the television several months ago. The Nazi hunter, Frida Maloney. Do you kill Nazis when you catch them? Oh, that's against the law. It's much better to put them on trial so people can learn. Learn what? Who they were, what they did. So why even catch them? Just put it all in history books. <laughs> Clever boy you have uh, for doing. <laughs> yes, but uh, definitely lazy. For example, right now he should be in his room practicing. I can't be in my room and answer the door at the same time, can I? Oh, I was only teasing, darling. Now, please, go and practice. Hmm? express my sympathy. Things must be very difficult for you right now. Oh, thank you. Is um, he your only child? Yes. Did your husband leave all his money to Erich and you? And to a sister of his? Uh, why do you ask that? Oh, I was looking for a reason behind his death. Emil's death was an accident. Was he a Nazi? I did not meet him until 1955, so I have no way of knowing. Did he ever mention the name of a Dr. Josef Mengele? Who? There was a considerable age difference between you, wasn't there? Oh, that wasn't the only difference. <laughs> I was 20, straight off the farm, and he was Mr. High and Mighty of the Transport Commission. Um, 43, I think he was. Did he have any hobbies? No. Yes. Yes, he did have one special hobby, Herr Liebermann. He humiliated and beat my son at every given opportunity. Would you like me to tell you who really killed him? God! To set free a stupid little farm girl after 22 years of unhappiness. Do Nazis answer prayers, Herr Liebermann? No, that is God's business. And I have thanked him every night since he pushed Emil under that car. He could have done it sooner, but I thank him anyway. And go and wash your hands for tea. Hello? I'm on my way, Mother! If you do hold on, I'll just get her.
Nancy. You can't spend your life in bed. Incredibly precise. Everything right on schedule. You did not have to make the trip, I bet you could have used the radio. Not that I do not welcome a little intelligent company down here. Don't I remember the digital clock you admired so much in his home? Uh, thank you, my friend. Very nice of you. It's a rational device. Remarkable. There's a problem. Lieberman. He was in Gladbeck in Doring's house. Could possibly have found out about Doring. You don't know. How could I? The boy, Kohler. Impossible. Then how did Lieberman get to Doring? Sure, coincidence. That's not a very scientific explanation, is it, Doctor? Are you interrogating me, Colonel Zybert? General Rausch put me in charge of security for this project. How can I function if I don't have all the facts? But you do. A nosy, incompetent old Jew has bumbled onto one victim. What more do you have to know? Any idiot could see the next logical step. Kill him. We don't want to create a martyr. Ridiculous. Besides, he could have contacted various police agencies or intelligence services. They would not pay any attention to him. If he died suddenly, they would. Well, then what are you going to do? Lieberman will have to be watched more carefully from now on. If he seems to be getting closer to us, a decision will be made. We will balance the danger of killing Lieberman against the scientific validity of your project. Are you my esteemed chief of security telling me that a project 20 years and millions of dollars in the making will be dropped because of this insignificant impotent old Jew? It wouldn't do to antagonize me, Dr. Mengele. I have been one of your few supporters since this Lieberman business began. And should I drop to my knees in gratitude? Listen to me, Zappert. I will not permit you to lay your failure or your fear at my door. I am a scientist. I have done my job. You are an executioner. Do yours. That fiber was a genuine accident witnessed by many people. Let me, I met a young housewife who was not exactly heartbroken by the death of her old husband. And at hot time, they slammed the door in my face. That's the way it will probably be with most of these people. I know. Come, let's get the car. Yes, please. Excuse me, Mr. Lieberman. My name is David Bennett. I think you know a friend of mine, Barry Kohler. Oh, uh, are you the boy who's been calling? Uh, what news of Mr. Kohler? None. 
I know he was working with you. That is not correct. Well, he was in contact with you. How do you know that? From letters we received. We? Oui? The young Jewish defenders. Oh, that bunch of fanatics. Kohler told me he walked alone. Yes, and he did, thanks to you. After he read all your books, he decided to change his methods. I did not send your friend to Paraguay. He sent me these to prove that he wasn't off on some wild goose chase. He couldn't identify these three young guys, so I traced them. This is Kleist, Hessen, this is Schwimmer, members of a neo-Nazi organization in Paraguay. This has nothing to do with this man. Does Barry Kohler's life have anything to do with you? No, no, you have no right to talk that Is way. Barry Kohler still alive? How do I know? Mr. Lieberman, Barry is dead. You know that. And I know that. And that's why I'm here. To pick up where he left off. That means with you. I walk alone. I'm not asking you for a job. I simply want some information from you. I can't help you. I won't leave you until you talk to me. I'm going to plant myself on your doorstep and I'll be waiting for you there every morning. Now, you're stuck with me until you give me the information that I need. Ezra, I got another envelope of clippings from Benon. A big one. All right, young men. We'll talk. I'm looking for the village of Stolin. You're going the wrong way. They turn around and take the south road for about 16 kilometers. Then bear right. You can't miss it. Thanks. What are you doing in these parts? What? You are not Swedish. I come from Dortmund originally, but I live in Stockholm now. I have spent some time in Germany myself. Come now! Mund! What's happened to your memory? My God! Major Arthur! <laughs> <laughs> I knew it was you! I can't believe it! What in the world are you doing up here? No, it's no great story. My sister was married to a Swede. And after I escaped from the internment camp, I hid out with them. I am Lars Lofqvist now, inspector of the power company. And now what about you? I come up here on a job for the Comrades organization. In Sweden? My God, what's going on? Can you tell me, or would it violate orders? But to hell with orders. I'm sick of orders. I'm up here on Stolli to kill a school teacher on Saturday. But don't ask me why. I cannot make head or tail of it. Who is this teacher? Lundberg? Olafsson? Lundberg. But I don't know what he looks like. No doubt he's probably a harmless old man. It doesn't make any sense. It makes sense to your superiors. Or they wouldn't have given you the assignment. An order is an order. Good God, man! You are an officer of the SS! Have you forgotten? My honor is loyalty. Those words were supposed to be engraved on your soul. I know Lundberg. I will point him out to you. It isn't Lundberg. It doesn't have to be Saturday.
No one would have wanted to kill Jack. The man was beloved. If you had seen the wreath his students set... <coughs> I have only one or two more questions to ask. Did your husband belong to any international group? Uh, he was in the American Legion. Rotary. I guess that's international. Legion sent a color guard to the funeral. The coffin was draped in the American flag. <laughs> what are you doing out of bed? I just came to get a glass of grapefruit juice. He's got the flu. Also, I thought he could stay home a few days because of the... This is Jack Curry, Jr. Just Jack Curry. Now. Jack, you bite your tongue. This is Mr. Lieberman, a famous man from Vienna in Austria. What's he famous for? This is fantastic. You know you have a double? A boy who lives in Gladbeck in Germany, exactly like you. Exactly like me? I never saw anything like it. Two twin brothers could not be brothers. Jack, you go up to bed and I'll bring you your juice. I want to find out about Just the do what I tell you. When you start paying the doctor bills, then you can hang around and get sick all you want. Now, just say goodbye and go. Jesus H. Christ, goodbye. You watch your mouth, young man. It is amazing. I thought he was this young boy from Germany come to visit you. Even the voice, the look in the eyes, the eye. Look, I don't like to be rude, but as you can see, I got a lot of things to do here. Look, I'm sure that nobody shot Big Jack on purpose. Uh, it was a horrible accident, if you'll excuse me. Hello, is this the Harrington residence? Yes, this is the Harrington residence. Can I talk to your mother, please? Well, you could, but you can't. This will only take a moment, I promise you. My mother isn't receiving today. Well, perhaps if you told her that... Don't you understand English, you ask? We are not at home. Wilcox had two married daughters. No, no sons. The Harringtons. They have any children. What did the boy look like? Sort of pale. He had... Straight, dark hair. Very dark. Blue eyes. Yeah, yeah, I'm listening. Yeah. Why do you want to know about the kids all of a sudden? Listen, Mr. Bennett. If you want to ask the questions, you pay for the phone call. The... No. Nothing. No, I haven't found a link. No, I'm in the dark. Yeah, I call you tomorrow, I promise. Coming. I have to speak to you, Mr. Lieberman. Oh, come in. I was just coming to see you. It's done. No, I can't stay long. Jack Jr. doesn't know where I've gone. Mr. Lieberman, my son is the only thing I've got. I can't take him away from me. I have no intention of this. When you spoke about that boy in Germany, I got worried. The lady who gave Jack Jr. to us made us swear never to tell anyone. Your son's adopted. It's just that she was a German lady. She was very nice, really. I was amazed when I read in the papers about all the things you said she did. Oh, God. I knew I should never have come here. Will you give me your word that you do not have a recording device in your briefcase? Thank you. Do you have 
have the depositions? I have bought one. The agreement was that you would provide an advance look at all the testimony against my client, with particular regard to any scars, deformities, or disabilities suffered by the this victims. The position is brought in good faith. Two others will come if the interview should prove satisfactory. You realize how unjust all this is. Mrs. Maloney has been married to an American citizen for 27 years. She has two children, one grandchild. I suppose this can be corroborated. For the mother of the child and three other surviving witnesses. We will keep the interview brief. We will discuss only my client's activities in America between 1964 and 67. You will ask nothing about the charges against her or about any event that occurred during or directly after the war. One question of that nature and I will immediately terminate the interview. to speak to you about my work with the adoption agency. That is correct. I don't mind. What I did may have been slightly illegal, but I brought happiness to so many people, and that's what's important, huh? Uh, tell me, if you will, how you came to work for this agency? In the spring of 1963, I was contacted by someone I knew in the Comrades' organization. Oh, who? Maloney will not answer that. They'd helped me after the war and wanted me to return the favor by getting a job in an adoption agency. Did they say why? If you let me finish, you'll find out. The Rush Goddess Agency hired me. The Comrades' Organization was interested in rejects, couples who had been denied children because the husband was too old. I was to go through the files looking for applications, specifically those of families with Nordic Christian backgrounds, in which the husband was born between 1910 and 1914, and the wife between 1933 and 1937. The husband had to have a job in something like uh, civil service, and both spouses had to be in perfect physical health. Did they explain why they wanted to audit? That information is not relevant. I was expected to obey my orders, not to question them. This I did, as I always had. About a year after that, I was ordered to contact several of the applicants and offer them a healthy white baby boy, complete with New York State adoption papers. They were to pay me $500, and after their medical certificates had been clear, they would receive the babies. We would meet at the motel near Kennedy Airport. That used to be Idlewild. The babies were delivered to me, usually by stewardesses with Varick Airlines. Varick? Did the babies all come from Brazil? Is that important to you? 
What did they look like? Well, they were all beautiful little boys with black hair, piercing blue eyes. If you're looking for a long-lost Jewish grandson, he was not among them. <laughs> How many couples did you give the babies to? About 20. Only Americans? Some are Canadian. No Europeans? No. Can you remember a curry family? A curry, yes. Uh, who else? Wheelock. Henry Wheelock. They gave me my dog, Shatsy. Beautiful dog, my mom. He's only ten weeks old when we got him. <laughs> Where is Wheelock from? New Providence, Pennsylvania. And how long after the caries did the Wheelocks get their baby? It was 14 years ago. I don't remember. And what has uh, Josef Mengele to do with all this? We won't answer it. It was all a trick, wasn't it? I know nothing of Mengele. But you'll link me with him, won't you? You want a pound of flesh, you don't care how you get it. 30 years, the world has forgotten. Nobody cares. And you persist and persist. Now, why don't you get off my back? One more minor question. I'll say nothing to you. As you wish. This interview has not gone by any means to my satisfaction. I will therefore withhold the other two depositions we talked about. You lying Jewish man! You are not a guard now, madam! You are a prisoner! I may live here empty-handed, but you are not going anywhere. I think Frau Meloni could answer one more question. When is your dog's birthday? <laughs> you are an insane old man after all, aren't you? Shatsi's birthday it was December 11th. <laughs> Have a safe trip, David. Bye-bye. It was David. He's off to New York for his sister's wedding, but he'll be back in a week. Uh, Mangala gives babies. Fourteen years later, he kills the fathers. He kills Doring, Harrington, Curry, and the Currys got their babies four weeks apart, and the fathers were killed four weeks apart. Relock. Malone Stark was born December 11th, ten weeks. I've already worked it out. February the 20th. That's only four days from now. Relock. How can I call Vlog and tell him he's going to be killed by the people who gave him his baby? By Josef Mengele, who's already killed the fathers of at least two other boys who happen to be twins? Who would believe such a preposterous story? How kind of you to come. 
pleasure to be here. Could this be little Elsa? Yes, you remember. Last time I saw you, you were that high. You had whooping cough. No, no. I'm going to dance with your beautiful daughter. away from surgery for one moment. If you will excuse me. And why was I not told that that man was called back? All the men have been recalled. Recalled? They should all be back here by the end of the week. But why? What had happened? Lieberman visited Frieda Maloney in prison. Lieberman again. Will I be plagued to my dying day by that infernal Jew? Maloney told him about the adoptions. Well, that is not catastrophic, Seibert. She only knows about America. The work can still continue in Europe. The organization does not share your optimism, Herr Doctor. But all Lieberman has are a few paltry shreds of information he could not possibly piece together. Eighteen of your subjects have died. That means that according to your figures, we can be sure of one, perhaps even two successes. And if my calculations were wrong, there's only one chance in 20 or 30. No, Seifert, the men must go back. They can't. The operation has been terminated. Terminated? By whose authority? General Rausch and the Colonels. I, I told you. I told you from the beginning. Kill him. Kill him. It would have been so easy. It has gone beyond Lieberman. We don't know where else it's involved. You betrayed me! You all, all a bunch of selfish old men who have lost your courage. You only want to bask in the sun in your old age. And if your uh, young grandchildren have to live in a world which is run by Jews and rats and Orientals and Slavs, you could not care less. Your operation has been canceled. No. Your operation has been canceled. Mine continues.
Mengele was sort of a primitive geneticist in his own way, wasn't he? I understand that he experimented on human beings. Mm. Twins. Then he was nothing more than a sadist, really. <laughs> a sadist with an MD and a PhD? Well, some people would say that's a perfect definition of a scientist. <laughs> What exactly do you mean when you say the boys you saw were more than twins? Ah, not only did they look alike, but they were also very alike in personality. That is unusual. Studies show that twins who are separated at birth develop totally different personalities. But these twins, or perhaps I should say triplets, because I believe that my associates saw another, were like the same people but brought up uh, with uh, different languages. It's impossible, of course. Excuse me, doctor, but what is impossible? What is impossible, doctor? Mononuclear reproduction. Oh, doctor. Cloning. What if I were to tell you that I could take a scraping of skin from your finger and create another Ezra Lieberman? I would tell you not to waste your time or my finger. Anyway, that is cloning. It was first done with plants. A cutting taken from a plant and transplanted grew to be the exact duplicate of the donor plant. Now we are doing the same thing with laboratory animals. You mean... You can produce an animal from itself? We take the unfertilized egg of an ovulating female and destroy all of its genes and chromosomes. We then implant the nucleus of the donor cell, which could be taken from a blood sample or even a skin scraping. That cell, with its genetic material intact, eventually becomes an embryo and is born as a living creature. Without parents. Well, it has no father because the egg was never fertilized. No mother because its genetic code comes from another being. Can you follow that? And this uh, creature is an exact duplicate of itself? Oh, doctor, how can that be? Come along. Our experiments began with the simplest of animals, shrimps and frogs. Animals in which the female's eggs are fertilized externally. A 
when we moved on to mammals, we tried several laboratory animals and found the rabbit most convenient. I had to develop instruments which could accomplish the operation and a whole micro-injection system. I'll show you how it's done. Here we are removing the eggs of a white rabbit from the fallopian tubes. Now, you see the egg under a microscope. I've brought the point of an ordinary sewing needle into view to give an idea of size. They are that small? Most mammal eggs are about that size. Including human eggs? Yes. The next step is to destroy the egg nucleus with ultraviolet light so that none of its genetic makeup remains. Now, you see an egg from a white rabbit ready to be injected with the blood cell from a black rabbit donor. With the injection pipette, one of the blood cells is sucked up and then injected into the egg. After a few hours, the eggs in culture divide and are ready to be put back into the female. There they grow into embryos, which in a month's time, the normal gestation period, they will become baby rabbits. In this instance, a black litter from a white mother and their black color proves that they have been cloned from the blood cell of a black rabbit. But isn't it difficult to get the egg back into the female? Transferring the eggs isn't a problem. We do that all the time with laboratory animals. The really tricky part is the microsurgery. Getting the donor cell into the egg. You are lucky that one in 10 survives. And this can be done with humans? If the surgical technique were precise enough. It's monstrous, doctor. Why? Wouldn't you want to live in a world full of Mozarts and Picassos? Of course, it's only a dream. Not only would you have to reproduce the genetic code of the donor, but the environmental background as well. Is Mengele trying to reproduce himself? No. He has brown eyes and he comes from a very wealthy family. Let's examine the family background of the donor. My father is 65 years old, a civil servant. The mother is 42, you said. She dotes on the child. Boy. The boy is pale, dark hair. Blue eyes. Spoilt. Right? Now, Mengele would certainly know every social and environmental detail would have to be reproduced. Thus, if the parents were divorced when the boy was 10, this would have to be arranged. Dr. Brückner. The one who is cloned, the donor, he has to be alive, doesn't he? Not necessarily. Individual cells taken from a donor can be preserved indefinitely. With a sample of Mozart's blood and the women, someone with the skill and the equipment could breed a few hundred baby Mozarts. It's really been done. But I'd give to see one of those boys. Hello? 
Lieber Mann! Herr lieber Mann! Not Mozart, Doktor. Not Picasso. Not the genius who would enrich the world. But a lonely little boy with a domineering father, a customs officer who was 52 when he was born, and an affectionate, doting mother who was 29. The father died at 65 when the boy was nearly 14. Adolf Hitler.
Silverman. Yeah. Come on in. Beautiful dogs. Tear the throat out of anyone who even looks cross-eyed at me. I guess you can see why I didn't exactly wet my pants when you said someone was out to get me. Yeah. Take off your coat. Impressive. Yeah. My son took those pictures. Very good. Very good. A little artsy farts, if you ask me. Is your son at home now? No, he's in school. And uh, Mrs. Relock? Guess she at home. She's still at work. So, you're the guy who got that Nazi Eichmann. I located him. It was the Israelis who did the actual kidnapping. How much you get for that? Nothing. I did it for the satisfaction. I hate all Nazis. I don't know about Nazis. It's the niggers we got to worry about. Hey, why are these Nazis after me? Well, uh, you know, I, I find it very hard to talk. Don't worry about them. They won't bother you, unless you bother me. I was attacked by, by a dog when I was a child, German Shepherd. And I still feel uncomfortable with the dog in the room. Jesus, you're like my neighbor Wally. I mean, he won't even walk up the driveway unless the dogs are locked up. Okay. Come on, boys, here you go. There's no other way that they can come in? No. Thank you. I feel much better. Hey, put your hands up. What the hell are you up to, anyway? Is there a basement in this house? Yeah. Take me. Hey, hey, hey. Do you have any pictures of your son? There is an album on the table. What do you want them for? Please do not worry. I'm very anxious to see him and talk to him. I am the doctor who delivered him. Open the door. Go down the stairs, Mr. Vilar. Listen, I don't give doodly shit about Jews or Nazis. Good.
Tell me, please, which way to Quarryville? Down here to the end of the exit. You'll be on 30. Make a left. It'll take you straight into Quarryville. Thank you. Mr. Wheeler? Mr. Vilot! and all your efforts have gone for nothing. I have the money and I have the bill, and no one can stop me. Did you kill Vlock? No, he's in the kitchen mixing us some cocktails. Do you know what I saw? 
on the television in my motel room at one o'clock this morning. Films of Hitler. They are showing films about the war, the movement. People are fascinated. The time is ripe. Adolf Hitler is alive. This album is full of pictures of him. Bobby V. Locke and 93 other boys are exact genetic duplicates of him, bred entirely from his cells. He allowed me to take half a liter of his blood and a cutting of skin from his ribs. <laughs> we were in a biblical frame of mind. On the 23rd of May, 1943, at the Berghof, he had denied himself children because he knew that no son could flourish in the shadow of so godlike a father. But then he heard what was theoretically possible that I could create one day, not his son, not even a carbon copy, but another original. He was thrilled by the idea. The right Hitler for the right future. A Hitler tailor-made for the 1980s, 90s, 2000s! <laughs> Imagine how happy I am, how joyous I am to see you standing there so fine and strong and handsome. Call these dogs off, Bobby. Call the dogs off, please. I am an old friend of the family. In fact, I am the doctor who delivered you. And I stopped by having just returned from abroad. And he let me in. Huh. And then he pulled out a gun. Fortunately, I was able to overpower him. Now call them uh, off, Bobby. Call them uh, off. Please. Cut. Cut. Oh, how clever. I said off. And I said away. And I said no gun, no more gun. Then you had the gun. No, he had... They're trained he... to attack anyone carrying a gun. Well, they were locked up and the he... The dogs are never out. locked up. Bobby, my dear, dear... Action! Cut! Cut! I won't listen to you. I... Bobby, that man is your enemy. Do not listen to him. I beg of you. Call the police. Yeah. By all means, do so, Bobby. But first, there are some things about yourself you must know. What do you mean? If I prove to you that I know you better than anyone in the world, better even than your own mother, will you listen to me?
You are a clever boy, are you not? You do not do well in school. That is because you are too clever, too busy thinking your own thoughts. But you are much smarter than your teachers, huh? My teachers are nowhere. You are going to be the world's greatest photographer, are you not? Have you ever felt superior to those around you, like a prince among peasants? I feel different from everyone sometimes. You are infinitely different, infinitely superior. You were born of the noblest blood in the world. You have it within you to fulfill ambitions a thousand times greater than those of which you presently dream. And you shall fulfill them, Bobby. You shall. You are the living duplicate of the greatest man in history. Adolf Hitler. Oh, man, you're weird. Mm -hmm. Buffy, I'm telling you the truth. Find you have the strength your within you father. to command mm -hmm. armies, he to bend whole nations to your will, your to destroy father. without mercy all who oppose you. Bobby, listen to me. It was this vicious Jew, your sworn enemy. He killed your father, and he came here to kill you. Bobby, let me protect you. All your power will burst forth when the time comes, when you grow older, and you see the world engulfed by human garbage. When you feel this urge rising within you to save your own Aryan folk from extinction, then you will rejoice in your heritage and bless me for creating you. Poppy, you must understand your parents are of no importance. They were chosen for you. Now that they have served their purpose, they must disappear from your life! Poppy! Poppy! You freaked out maniac! Get out of here. Out. I think you'll die if I don't call an ambulance for you. I could just go out right now. My mom won't be home until late. You'll be dead by then. If I call the police, will you tell them what I did? Okay. Shake. Come on, shake. Okay, you got a deal. I'd like an ambulance and a police car to come to the Wheelock residence on Old Buck Road, please. 
Hey, man, this is an emergency. A heavy-duty emergency. What a surprise. Which one of the assassins was it, Mr. Lieberman? I thought you went to a wedding. No more deception now. No more blind alleys. What? It was Mangler. It's dead. It's awful. The Doring boy isn't dead yet. Neither is Simon Harrington or Jack Curry or Bobby Wheelock. Took a little time, a little backtracking, a visit to Dr. Bruckner. But now we know everything. And what are you going to do about it? Kill the boys. Brilliant man, that Mengele. I suppose he had all 94 of those names and addresses memorized? Now you are trying to fool me. You have been searching the room? He must have had a list. Is it? Now I have it. Give it to me. Why? We have the right and we have the duty. To do what? Kill children? Give me that list. You will have to take it from me. And when you do, you can add my name to the list. I don't mean you any harm. You'll have to kill me, David. The first of those boys that you touch, I will turn you and your entire organization over to the police. I will do that. You would protect Hitler. No. Will not. Slaughter the innocent, and neither will you. A fanatic you may be, but a murderer of young children you are not. You know, there is a nurse here, an angel of mercy called Miss Hanlon, who actually gives me sick of You know what she said to me the other day? She said, Mr. Lieberman, if you can escape Wickenburg, and you can escape those bullets, then a few cigarettes will not hurt you. Isn't that a nice thing to say? Thank you. 